Hello everyone, my name is Nayan, and I would like to go over today a very interesting piece of technology used to overcome a widespread automation challenge in the popular modded Minecraft pack, Greg Tech New Horizons. This mod is famous for its build complexity and difficulty, often taking players thousands of hours to complete the pack. Today we'll be going over something called universal processing, which is a really interesting way to distribute recipes to multiple machines working in parallel. I hope you enjoy this deep dive into something that I find extremely interesting uh, and something that can help you as a GTNH player conquer this pack. Have you ever wanted to distribute a variety of different applied energistics recipes between multiple parallelizing GregTech machines? Are you tired of recipes accidentally outputting the incorrect item due to having multiple different clashing non-consumed circuits in the same multi-block? Or are you tired of building a machine for each specific circuit? If any of these ring true for you, let me introduce you to the wonderful world of universal automation. So, what problem is universal automation trying to fix? If you have ever played Greg Tech New Horizons before, or any GT pack, you will know that crafting recipes in GT machines are often dictated by a non-consumed circuit, generally 0 through 24, which allows the same items to be crafted into different outputs. For example, Carbon monoxide, crafted with carbon, oxygen, and circuit 1, and carbon dioxide, crafted with carbon, oxygen, and circuit 2, both have different outputs even though the inputs are similar. While multi-block processing machines can hold multiple different circuits at a time in multiple different buses, the machine can sometimes prioritize the wrong circuit for your craft, based on a number of different factors that are hard to work around, including the bus position, the highest circuit number, reading order within the bus, and many other factors. So, one solution you may find often is simply create one multi-block machine for each circuit that you intend on using. Well, this poses some problems. Machines for circuits 0 and 1 have the most recipes by far, so those would often remain bottlenecked while all other machines would remain dormant. Additionally, the potential power draw and resource costs from 10 or more different machines that could simultaneously be active could cause problems for your power network. Another problem you may have noticed with all GregTech multi-block machines is they take a variable amount of time to respond to which items are being placed in them. While this problem is solvable without universal automation, good universal setups must eliminate this problem in order to increase recipe throughput speed. Today, I'm going to show you a universal chem reactor setup that can be built as early as EV. This was designed by a wonderful person named Ivy Lou, and I'm going to link her video, her tutorial, in the description and in the cards. First, I want you to build a chem reactor, like normal. Double hatch action. Then, I want you to add an ME output bus and an ME output hatch. Like so. I want you to open up the side of this chem reactor and do a couple of things. First, we're going to add an input bus here and a quadruple input hatch here. Use the highest tier you can as this will allow you to make bigger recipes. Add an item detector cover to the, to the item input bus and a fluid detector cover to the input hatch. Right-click both of those with a soldering iron to set the redstone output signal to strong. Then, I want you to set the input bus to an item threshold of 2. Apply a machine controller cover to the side of this LCR controller block, and seal that right up. You'll also want maintenance. For the purpose of this video, I'm using this auto maintenance hatch, but you'll just use a regular maintenance hatch. Add a fluid storage bus to the input hatch and a storage bus to the input bus. Add three covered cable or any type of cable as such. Below it, add a fluid packet decoder with a storage bus facing it. I now want you to filter these storage buses. 
You will search fluid packet in NEI and you'll find something that looks like this, an invalid fluid. Drag that into the storage bus and add a fuzzy card. This will filter any type of fluid packet to be sent to the fluid packet decoder to be decoded into a regular ass fluid. Then add the fluid packet to your item storage bus with the same fuzzy card, but this time with an inverter card. That way, the input bus should never receive any fluid packets. Add an MEIO port here and here. It is important to set this bottom one to transfer into the cell and move to output when work is done. Add an item importer here and here. Add a hopper here and a baby chest up here. Using a forge micro block saw, I want you to take a block of your choice, cut it once into slabs, twice into panels, and a third time into covers. Then use one of these covers and cut it into corpse strips. Apply them to the side of your machine as such with the corpse strip on the top of the item importer. Place red alloy wire here, here, and here. Add a timer facing upwards here, a repeater facing into the timer here, and a knot gate facing the same direction as the repeater here. If you mess up the orientation of these Project Red circuits, you can always right click with the screwdriver to turn it 90 degrees. From here, you'll want to place a red alloy wire on this item importer and another one on this item importer. Set the timer to 0.4 seconds. From here, connect your item conduits to your input and output of your machine, namely your baby chest and your hopper. I like to get rid of the extract on these two things. Set the baby chest to insert on cyan and not to extract. Set the hopper to extract on black and set it to always active. The final steps are, you'll want to connect your output of your LCR to the main network. In order to get power to the subnet, you'll use some cable as well as a quartz fiber to connect power from main net or any other network to your setup. Finish by plugging in your chemical reactor to power. Once you finish this, your universal chem reactor is done, and you can build one of these or many. So what did we just build? When a recipe is sent to any one of these universal processing setups, the cell is deposited in the small chest. It is then pulled into this IO port where its items are deposited in the super bus and the fluids are decoded first and then deposited in the input hatch. Once the recipe is done, the storage cell that is empty is now pulled into the MEIO port that pulls the non-consumable circuit back into it and then goes out through this hopper. This, however, is only half of the battle. In order to distribute recipes to your machines, you'll need something called a cell distributor. For LCRs, I generally use circuits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 19, 23, and 24, which means that you'll need a drive for each of those circuits. This may look complicated at first, but let me show you how to build one, and then I'll tell you what's going on. Begin by creating this build. Use a wrench to point the mainnet interfaces into the subnet interfaces. This way, the mainnet interfaces send items only into the subnet and not into each other. We will mark this drive with a circuit 24, as we're going to fill each cell in this drive with a single non-consumable circuit 24. Make sure that your drive subnet receives power via a quartz cable. This can be from mainnet or from any other energy source for AE2. We are now going to fill 10 cells with a single circuit 24 each, like so. Once you have your circuit 24 drive and a single cell full of your circuit 24, you'll want to set up your item conduits. Here I use two item filters, one set to blacklist on extract and one set to whitelist on extract. You're going to take your 24 cell, your circuit 24 cell, and add that to both of the filters. Then, you want to set the extract to cyan with round robin enabled and always active, and you'll want to set your insert to black channel. 
Connect this Ender I.O. conduit to the group of processing machines that you have built. You can now deposit your circuit 24 cells within the ME drive. If you're tired of filling your cells by hand, you can use a setup such as this, with the MEIO port set to transfer to cell, with move to output when work is done, and item importers in a timer. Place your cells in the drawer below and your circuits in the drawer above, and flick the lever to slowly fill each cell with a single non-consumed circuit 24. From there, we just load up the rest of our drive with our circuit 24 cells, and that's it. Make as many of these as you need for each circuit number that you use, making sure to power each subnet as you go. You can use as many or as few interfaces as you want to insert patterns into the subnets. When patterning for the universal LCR, it's important to do a couple of different things. The first of which is to get rid of byproducts. That way, you only target the output that you want. The second of which is to know the size of your input hatches. For example, a quadruple EV input hatch can only work with 32,000 of each fluid. So, we'll multiply our pattern likewise, so we have 32,000 input fluids maximum. Make sure to set all of these mainnet interfaces to blocking mode, so that way it only sends one pattern at a time. Also, add an advanced blocking card to each interface on the subnetwork. The final step is to put any one of your Circuit24 patterns into any one of these mainnet interfaces. When you're ready, call the pattern and see if it works. But nine, how does this work? Well, that's a simple question with a complicated answer, but I've made a very special animation to show you how. In order to send patterns to the machine, we do something called cell swapping. Originally designed by SAMHSA, this idea uses subnets full of item cells with one non-consumed item in each cell to deliver recipes to processing machines. For example, each of the cells in this drive contain a single circuit one. When a recipe is called, the items and fluids are sent from the main network via an ME interface into our drive full of circuit one cells. Behind this drive is an EnderIO item conduit filtered to blacklist the basic cell with only circuit one. I set this to the SIAM channel. It is also set to whitelist the basic cell with only the circuit 1, so that way it can go back into the drive on black channel. When a recipe is received in the circuit 1 drive, the cell that the items are stored on is immediately extracted by the conduit, which can see that the NBT data no longer matches the blacklist. This cell is then extracted and distributed to any one of the processing machines you have built to have the fluids decoded and the craft completed. When the recipe is done and the output has been sent back to the main network, the cell picks up the non-consumed item and gets pulled into the hopper. At this point, it should only contain the non-consumed item, in this case, a circuit one. This allows the EnderIO conduit network to then pull the cell back into the correct drive, completing its full journey. I use this setup personally to on-demand all of my plastics, as well as any other LCR recipe you can think of, including Ender eyes, PIC wafers, and circuit boards. Being able to on-demand stuff like silicon rubber, PBI, polyphenylene sulfide, PTFE, and more, instead of passiving them, is incredibly effective. This setup is also incredibly useful with precise assemblers, which have over 14,000 different recipes distributed over more than 25 circuit types. Mixers are also known for their constant clashing, which makes them a prime candidate for universal. You can also apply this to any non-consumed items, including bio and breakout circuits, solidifier molds, laser engraver lenses, extruder shapes, and even weird things like copper plates. Go crazy! If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about universal crafting setups, feel free to join my Twitch or my Discord and ask any one of the nerds there about their universal crafting setups. I also want to credit the actual creators of the system, and people who walked me through using the system, including SAMHSA, IvyLoo, Invisible, Duct, Hollowings, and many more. My name is Nine, and I thank you for watching. Do your best, be kind to yourself, and be kind to others. Peace.